Welcome home. We're getting a divorce. The divorce papers are inside. I had just returned home, carrying our newborn daughter. His cold words left me in shock. As I stood there stunned, my husband began to leave the house. Snapping back to reality, I grabbed his arm in desperation and demanded an explanation. What do you mean, divorce? You need to explain this to me. It's simple. I just don't love you anymore. I was utterly devastated by his words. Was I the only one who had been excited about starting our new life as a family of three? Without even looking at our child, he picked up his large bag and left. I am Harper, a 35-year-old housewife. Being quite timid, I was drawn to my husband's assertive personality and we started dating. A year later, prompted by my pregnancy, we got married. When I finally heard the sound of a baby crying, I was overjoyed to meet my 3,000 gram little angel. She was a very healthy and adorable baby girl. After sending him a photo of our daughter via email, I called him. To my disbelief, he said, What's this? Excuse me? She's not cute. She looks like a monkey. What are you talking about? She's your daughter. After that, my husband stopped contacting me, and no matter how many times I called, he never answered. I was in complete shock and couldn't understand why he would say such things about our child. Looking back, he had never shown much interest in the baby growing inside me, always seeming somewhat distracted. I had always felt uneasy about his indifference, but I was too overwhelmed by severe morning sickness to confront his aloof behavior. During my hospital stay after giving birth, my husband never showed up, and my anxiety grew even more. If he meets our baby, Tim will surely change, I kept repeating this mantra to myself, trying to believe it. But my wish never came true. He abandoned me and our newborn daughter. What do I do now? I have no one to turn to, I thought. I had no parents, and the only family I had were my in-laws. My father-in-law was a quiet and kind man, but my mother-in-law was harsh, and I honestly found her difficult to deal with. Harper, how long do you plan to remain a housewife? Excuse me? Just because you got pregnant doesn't mean you can be lazy. Get a job and support yourself without relying on your husband. But he wanted me to take care of the household. I don't want to hear excuses. From now on, you'll balance both childcare and work. Got it? Given our poor relationship, I felt I couldn't rely on her. Feeling desolate, I entered the house with the intention of putting my daughter to bed. However, an unusual sight awaited me inside. What is this? Everything I had prepared for my daughter, the crib, baby supplies, and even the furniture, was gone. All that remained were my few personal belongings and the divorce papers on the floor. I couldn't stand anymore and collapsed to the floor. Just then, my husband called. Maybe the divorce was just a moment of confusion? Maybe he's reconsidered and is coming back. Clinging to that hope, I answered the phone immediately. Hello? Where are you? Please come back soon. I forgot to mention, I sold the house. You need to be out by tomorrow. You can't be serious. What are we supposed to do? Become homeless, for all I care. I was shocked. How much more did he intend to make me suffer? Unable to hold back my emotions, I sobbed and pleaded for an explanation. You suddenly demand a divorce, and now even the house. 
What did I do wrong? Have you looked in the mirror since you got pregnant? What do you mean? You looked pale every day like I was living with a ghost. He laughed mockingly, then continued in a cold tone. I married you because you always did whatever I said. But now I regret it. What? I'm bored with your shy personality, so I'm divorcing you. That's too cruel. It's too selfish. I have nothing more to say to you. Pack up and leave the house. Goodbye. With that, he hung up. For the first time, I felt hatred toward my husband. But no matter how much I blamed him, it wouldn't change the situation. Feeling utterly helpless, I decided to leave the house to buy diapers and formulas that had disappeared. However, my daughter, who had been peacefully sleeping, suddenly began to cry and wouldn't stop no matter how much I tried to soothe her. Perhaps she sensed my desperation as I struggled to cope with my husband's betrayal and losing our home while trying to figure out how to take care of her. I sat on a bench in a nearby park, trying to calm her down when someone unexpected appeared. You shouldn't take a newborn outside at one month old. How can you be so irresponsible? You need to start acting like a mother. What? Mother-in-law? You know nothing. What if something happens to her? How will you take responsibility? It seemed she knew the day of my discharge and had come to visit the house. Finding it empty, she followed the sound of my baby crying and found me. As she scolded me harshly, a flood of emotions overwhelmed me, and I began to sob uncontrollably. Then, I felt something warm on my back. I didn't mean to make you cry. But why are you here? Where is Tim? Explain to me what happened. She gently rubbed my back, trying to comfort me. Confused by the unexpected kindness from her, I slowly recounted everything that had happened. Tim did that? Unforgivable. If you have nowhere to go, come to my house. But. No buts. I'll carry your things. Let's go. Following her lead, I headed to my in-law's house. As soon as we arrived, she said something astonishing. Let's live together from now on. What? You don't have anywhere else to go, do you? Are you planning to become homeless with the baby? Here, at least, you'll have a bed and food. Let's do that. I was bewildered. This was the same woman who had always treated me harshly, and now she seemed like a different person. Seeing my hesitation, she offered me a regretful smile. I've been told to you before, and I'm truly sorry. No, it's fine. I kept telling Tim he needed to take responsibility as a father. I feel terrible that I couldn't help and that it came to this. This isn't your fault. She slumped her shoulders and looked sad. Feeling flustered, I decided to ask the question that had suddenly come to mind. I always thought you disliked me, which is why you treated me so coldly. But is there another reason? It's because you reminded me of my younger self. I couldn't stand it. At this point, I learned something I had never known. My quiet and kind father-in-law had been unfaithful in his youth. My husband, who inherited his father's personality, also frequently got into trouble with other women. Then, she said something that struck me. I just wanted you to be a strong, resilient mother. That's why I was so hard on you. I repeatedly told you to get a job so you wouldn't struggle financially if you ever got divorced. Her harsh words had a purpose. 
realizing that she was a warm-hearted person. I felt overwhelmed with gratitude. But why didn't you divorce him? I don't think I could endure infidelity. I would have divorced him. That's because I've always been the one supporting the family financially. What do you mean? He looked down on me when I was a housewife and constantly had affairs. But I was determined to not let that crush me, so I started working. Eventually, I earned more than he did. Not wanting to lose the comfortable life we had, he became submissive, fearing I would divorce him. So, the way he is now is because he regretted his actions. Exactly. I also thought staying together was the best punishment for him, rather than an easy divorce. As we talked, I found myself beginning to smile. However, her expression suddenly turned serious. About Tim suddenly asking for a divorce, do you think he might be having an affair and wants to be with someone else? Have you noticed anything strange about his behavior? Honestly, I have no idea. But I can't just accept this divorce without doing something. I pulled the divorce papers I had brought from home out of my bag. What? This is. As we looked at the papers, my mother-in-law and I exchanged glances. We made a firm decision and began to formulate a plan. The next day, my mother-in-law made a call to execute our plan. I heard from Harper that you're getting a divorce. Has she already told you, Mom? What are you talking about? I'm feeling fantastic. It's the right decision to divorce someone like her. Next time, marry a younger and more wonderful woman. Yeah, right. I don't ever want to see her miserable face again. She might be living under some bridge by now. How pitiful he sounded. It seems like he has completely convinced himself that my mother-in-law dislikes me. Unaware that I overheard their conversation, I felt anger rising toward him as he boasted obliviously. But he has hell waiting for him. Actually, I want to introduce someone to you. Oh, has the next remarriage partner already been found? Well, yeah. That's wonderful news. We need to prepare a celebration for the two of you. Since the $1 million fixed deposit will mature in one month, let's prepare a big celebration. Seriously? Of course. But in return, you better introduce your partner to me properly before anything else. Don't rush into registering your marriage until then. Got it? Got it. I'll bring her to the family home in a month. Count on me to handle the celebration. My mother-in-law's acting skills are amazing. He fell right into our plan, and my mother-in-law and I exchanged knowing smiles. And so, I decided to quietly make preparations behind the scenes until that day arrived. A month later, unaware of the trap, my husband arrived at my in-law's house with a young woman, feeling proud and confident. I opened the front door with as much composure as possible and greeted them. Welcome to my house. My husband was visibly shocked as if he might topple over any moment while the woman wore a bewildered expression. Then my mother-in-law joined us. Come in, she said with authority, and they timidly entered the living room. Hey, mom, what's going on here? He stammered. Well, Harper, shall we begin? She said. I handed them a few photos of them entering a hotel and a report detailing their activities over the past month. I'll be seeking compensation from you too. With this much evidence, there's no way you can talk your way out of it. Be prepared. I said firmly. Wait a minute, how did you gather this evidence? 
My husband protested. My mother-in-law funded a detective to investigate. She said leaving this to the professionals was the best course of action. I explained. Why would mom cooperate with someone like her? He exclaimed. Oh? Am I mistaken? Who would support someone so unreasonable, someone who abandons your wife and child to marry another woman? She retorted. What about the $1 million celebration? He asked. That was a lie to prevent you from filing for marriage for a month. She replied. You tricked me. He exclaimed, his anger palpable, and the woman sitting beside him looked crestfallen, surely thinking this wasn't how things were supposed to go. I thought I had finally punished them, but then he uttered unbelievable words. We're already divorced. You can't claim compensation for cheating now. He's right. I'm not paying any compensation. Their words left me utterly flabbergasted. The statute of limitations for claiming compensation is three years from the discovery of infidelity. Unaware of such common knowledge, my confident husband and his mistress were snorting with self-assurance. So, I decided to enlighten them with a fact. You see, we're still legally married. Huh? That divorce paper you left behind? It hasn't been filed yet. What the hell? Why haven't you done it yet? You declared divorce without any explanation, and I couldn't accept that. Do you even realize the absurd parting gift you left when you walked out of the house? Confused by my words and exchanging looks with each other, I handed them a document. Isn't this your marriage certificate? I thought I lost that. How do you have it? It was tucked beneath the divorce papers. Leaving something like this behind, you're absent-minded, aren't you? Yes. The papers I thrust at them were the completed marriage registration forms of the two of them. On the day I found these, my mother-in-law and I realized that he intended to marry his mistress. So, instead of divorcing immediately, we decided to gather evidence to prove his infidelity while our marriage technically continued. I'll never forgive you for abandoning your family. And you, Noah, won't escape either. You'll pay the compensation properly. As I declared this, his face rapidly drained of color. However, the woman seemed oddly triumphant. Well, that's a relief. If you're divorcing him, it's fine with me. Excuse me? Because, you know, he is wealthy. He can pay any amount of compensation. Right? Isn't that so? Listening to her words, I finally understood his discomfort. He certainly isn't a high earner. Yet, when he appeared after a month, he was decked out in designer labels from head to toe. Surely, he had lied to this woman, claiming to be rich. And to cater to his mistress, he must have sold furniture, baby supplies, and even our house. So, I decided to enlighten the smug woman. Unfortunately, this man isn't wealthy at all. What are you talking about? His take-home pay is about $1,800. Quite low for his age. And I, his wife, can confirm it without a doubt. Ha! Huh. That's different from what I heard. Hey, is this woman telling the truth? What's going on? Your face is as pale as a ghost. Instead of freezing up, why don't you tell Lena Sen the truth from your mouth? Perhaps fed up with his silence as he bowed his head, the woman erupted in anger. Our engagement is off. I have no use for a broke man like you. 
Wait, please. I beg you. Don't abandon me. It was the first time I had seen him in such a pathetic state. As soon as the woman announced the cancellation of the engagement, he began crying and pleading for forgiveness. Seeing him like that, I grew increasingly angry and shouted, interrupting their conversation. For heaven's sake, enough. If you want to argue, do it outside. Get out of here right now. Startled by the sudden outburst, the two fell silent. Then, my mother-in-law, who had been silent all along, finally spoke up. Tim, you're no longer my son. Mom, what do you mean? I mean I'm disowning you. Leave with that woman immediately. Never show your faces in front of us again. Understand? The two froze in fear at the fierce expressions on our faces. I thrust the prepared agreement in front of them, making them promise to pay compensation and my husband to pay child support. They left the house as if fleeing. That same day, I submitted the divorce papers, putting an end to my marriage with my husband. Later, as expected, my ex-husband and the woman broke up. Moreover, he had resorted to loan sharks to maintain the facade of being wealthy. He was fired from his job due to collection calls reaching the company, and he ended up working day labor while paying $2 million in compensation and $300 a month in child support. Naturally, he also demanded $1.5 million in compensation from his mistress. I heard she resorted to the streets to pay him off. On the other hand, I have built a very good relationship with my mother-in-law, whom I once felt awkward around. After the divorce, with my family gone, she suggested, Let's live together. And I decided to take advantage of her kindness. Starting a job and struggling to balance work with childcare, I feel like I'm gradually changing. This is probably because I've become a mother and have someone to protect and because I've been watching her closely. With my beloved daughter and my in-laws whom I want to cherish for life, I want to continue spending peaceful days. How did you find this story? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Well then, let's meet in the next video.